Hey everyone, so I have a new Gifted Hands video for you today. I've been kind of busy um, with work and, and packing and things like that, so I have what feels like a lot, but in as knowing how fast I crochet, it's not really a lot. So there is more than just crocheted items here, um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll start with the smaller of the items. Um, this right here, I still have threads here. Um, I am in a stitch group on Facebook, and so we are learning a few new stitches together every month. So this is the first two weeks stitch. I hope you can see it. It's really pretty. I love all the little detailing. I think this would make a really great scarf. And then the second one is this blue, oh, turn it this way, this blue piece. And I really liked this. I thought it would make a great part of like, um, detailing in either like a jacket or something like that. Um, I did crochet them together in a light blue. Um, this pink here is Red Heart uh, Shimmer in pink. The blue is a Karen Simply Soft yarn, and so is this blue here. Um, so this was the second two weeks stitch. And then as an... Uh, this is February, sorry. And then February stitch, which I just realized I have not completed all the way around, good to know, um, is this guy. He was a pain in the butt just because there's so many open spaces to get your finger and your ear hook caught. Um, as you can see, I didn't do my double crochet all the way across this top piece here. Um, and then once I do that, I will attach it to the bottom of the blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I think, 6 by 10, roughly. Um, I may do more, just depending on how many stitches there are um, per month. Right now we have up until September, so that's where I'm getting that math from. So. Um, Anyways, the next item I made is this little clutch using the um, dragon scale or crocodile stitch or mermaid scale um, stitch. It's Some even call it the petal stitch because it kind of looks like little uh, flower petals. Um, it's a really simple stitch once you get the hang of it, and as you can see, the switching of the colors is really easy. So, yeah. I would have liked to go on, like, have the colors change diagonally versus in rows like this. Um, but it's okay. I haven't lined it yet. I do plan on lining it. Um, but it's just a simple little clutch purse right now. Um, we'll go on to the next purse that I made. I did make another purse, and this is the, um, Bob Wilson 123's Granny, Granny Square pouch purse. Um, it uses 17 Granny Squares. I also used her Layla's Rose tutorial, Granny Square tutorial, to make it. Um, the handles are, uh inspired by a pair of handles that she made, but mine um, is just a continuous tube, whereas she used the I-cord, I think, to make her handles. And again, it's not lined, but it is ready to be lined. Um, and this one's actually fairly roomy. This would make a really nice little day, day purse. Um, and once it's lined, it will definitely be great. So the next item up is this beanie I made. This is the um, bridge beanie by the Crochet Zombie. I used a red heart pink 
uh, Super Saver yarn, I think in perfect pink or something like that. And then this is an Impeccables. It's Impeccables? Or is it Vanna Choice? It's either Impeccables or it's Vanna's Choice. I can't remember which. I got it on sale for $1.99 and they're originally like three or four dollars I think so I snagged up three different colors of this and I just it's gray with a thread of rainbow and I just I love it I think it's so pretty um it's a little big for my mom um I kind of commandeered it I wear it kind of slouched in the back so I like that so um this next portion um is an update on a project that I've kind of been working on for the past couple of weeks and I told a friend of mine that I would post a video on them once they were done. They're not completed, there's still a lot of pieces that I have to make, um, but for the most part they are done. Um, like I said, for the most part. Alright, so the next thing is this girl. Oh, her wiglet. <laughs> um, as you can see, her hair comes off. It's just attached with little snappy sewn on here. Um, her hair is done in the traditional style, not the newer uh, uh, Cinderella style where they've got it sweeped off in like a bang. Um, she does have her little puff, because if you look at some of the older photos, um, it's kind of formed a little heart shape. Um, her necklace, her little choker, comes off, and her shoes are in a Mary Jane type style, as you can see, and then again, they, they do as well snap off. Um, she has a petticoat sewn into the under part of her skirt, and she has a hook to hook the back of her dress closed. So that is uh, Cinderella. I keep wanting to call her Snow White. Why? I don't know. But I do. Okay, so for the most part, this next doll is complete. With the exception of two pieces. Two small little pieces. I have to comb out her wig her hair. Um, I'm having issues getting the yarn to hold the wave, so my next attempt is to comb out the actual threads of the yarn and style it from there. Um, Snow has her little white piece here. Now, I don't have it sewn into her dress. I have it sewn into her cape, mainly because of the way I made her dress, and I'll show you. Her cape does snap on, which is a common feature in my dolls. Um, because I made her dress with a deep V in the back here and attaching it, um, it was close to impossible for me to figure out. She doesn't have as many um, pipe cleaners in her neck as Cinderella does, so her head's a little, a little on the fluffy side. So again, she features the hook clasp on her um, dress, as well as the petticoat sewn into her skirt, and I currently have one shoe done. It does need its snap sewn in, otherwise it's done, and I need to complete the other foot, and her shoes will be done. So, like I said, just those two things. The shoes need to be finished, and her hair needs to be done, and she's done. Then I got this brilliant idea, and it's still kind of stuck in my head. I'm still learning how to execute my brilliant ideas. Um, lately, I've been really into... Um, not really into, but I think they're really cute, and the idea behind them is really um, awesome. The, the whole tolerance idea I really like um, and so I have here one of the main characters from the Monster High series she is um, naked from the waist down so I'm covering her uh, her wig 
is also the same kind of feature. It does snap on and off. Um, her, the difference between Frankie and the other princess dolls is that Frankie is kind of my own doll creation. Um, I did use half of the pattern for the princess dolls as well as half the pattern for another doll from the same creator who made the print, who made the body f that I used for the princess dolls. Um, and I combined the two and I made Frankie. Um, her limbs are um, more poseable. Her limbs can move. She has more movability. That's what I wanted from her. So she does, um, and her head is a lot more movable. As well as, it's also, um, up until I put the wig on her, it was a lot more stable, um, as far as the neck being stronger. Um, her outfit is being modeled mainly from the Ghouls Alive doll, uh, Frankie Stein doll, in that she's wearing a white top and I'll have a plaid skirt on her. Um, the only difference is, is I don't have the black mesh sleeves. Um, I had finished the top before consulting the picture uh, when I got to the sleeve part. So that is the all of that for the dolls and my crocheted items. Um, another thing that I did this week was I depotted a bunch of my MAC eyeshadows. Um, I now have a completed MAC palette. Um, and I'll show you how oh, I haven't taped it in. Um, what I did is I went onto the MAC website and I clicked on the website and MAC has all of their colors color-coded. And so I took the colors that I had and followed in their coding system. Um, Oh wait, I have one spot left open, and then my palette is full. Um, so, let's see if I can do this without dumping them all. That's all that I have. Um, I do have a few nicks, or I didn't get the pan, or I didn't heat it up enough um, when I was getting ready to pull the pan out of the plastic. Um, I have a lot of neutral shades, a lot of browns and purples, um, as well as tans and creams. So, mainly just because I am leaving for the navy. I do have a few colors, a few brighter colors that are a little odd man out, like coppering and plumage and steamy. Um, I just really loved those colors. Um, there was a few yellows and greens that I want to. Um, I just haven't gotten that far to getting them. So, um, and so that I know which color is which, I did create the list. And then to keep the eyeshadows from transferring um, from the pan to the paper, I also cut a piece of um, shelf liner in the generalized shape of the MAC palette and then I just cut a little notch so that it doesn't catch when I close it and I just place this in the palette and it just creates like a cushion as well and so it keeps the pans really secure in the palette so I don't have to worry about my, my eyeshadow pans and a little bit of knocking but I think that's the ones where um, that I bought that were meant to go in the palette. So, um, the magnets are thinner than the magnets I use on the back of the pans that I get from the actual packaging, that were in their actual full packaging kind of thing. So, that's all that I've done besides packing. Um, I've got a couple of boxes that you can probably see behind me. Um, those are shoes. This one I need to, it's always been behind me in all of my videos. Um, I need to finish unpacking and then put some stuff off my shelf on there. Um, just some of the bulkier machines like my Cricut and my Xyron in there. Um, but otherwise, I am getting packed. I've cut my hair off. It's 
all gone. Um, I'm happy with this cut, actually. I like this cut a lot. It'll be great for freezing my butt off when I get to Chicago. So, um, yeah. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye!